Hi, this is Mark, coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today's August 1st, 2013, and I want to give a little uh, situation uh, report on what is happening. Um, we have not heard from Judge Fagerman at this point. And remember, we're waiting for him to give an opinion on whether or not he thinks that uh, we should go to trial and uh, whether I should receive a very big fine, which uh, our fine would be up to about 1.7 million now at this point because we, our sows have had their summer babies. So, um, so we haven't heard from them and we're kind of waiting for that. We're anticipating some sort of shenanigans to push this back again by uh, the Attorney General's office. Um, and that's all I know about that. Um, there was an article that came out recently, it was written by my senator, his name is Darwin Bohr. Um, I have met him several times. I met him uh, a year before this thing even happened. He came up to my place, we butchered chickens, and he had purchased some from the youth show, and, and he came up to pick them up, and I stood in the yard and, and uh, shot the breeze with him for a little while. And uh, just like a next door neighbor, you know, he's just a regular guy. And uh, I appreciated that about him. Uh, he wrote an article, it was an op-ed that came out, and it's been in all the newspapers around here. Um, and it, in the title it says, uh, Farmer Fined $700,000. And I thought it was an excellent piece. I think it really encapsulated uh, what this whole mess has been. And... Um, I would encourage you to get that and read that. But I have a commentary on on Darwin Boer for you. Um, he's a politician. He's a senator. I think he's been at it a while. Seems like it. Um, it's difficult, as as you know, as I know, as many people know, to not go with the flow, and uh, especially when you're in the limelight like he is in a senator's position. It, it, it's very difficult. Um, he went uh, against the party line. He went against the, uh, you know, if you read this, you'll see where he encourages people to write to the, uh, or contact the Attorney General's office, Bill Schuette, and also to contact the Governor's office, uh, Rick Snyder, and, and communicate your disgust at what they are doing with the their time, our time, our tax dollars, what they're putting a family through, um, and all this stuff. And, and I encourage you to do that too. But here's a senator, a Republican senator, that said that he would like it if his constituency would call uh, Schneider and tell him what you think, call Schuette and tell him what you think. He's really broken rank, you know. He is really broken rank. And he heard about it. He heard about it. I'm told that uh, certain individuals jumped down his throat pretty good about it, but he stood his ground and he said, uh, well, that's the way it is, boys, because you are in Lansing to do the people's business, not your own. Um, and I applaud him. I think he's a hero, and I think he's got a lot of guts for what he did. And uh, just uh, right on, Darwin Bohr. Um, you're a friend of mine. Um, likewise, I think that this is the time. This is the time in this struggle. And uh, this tr struggle, I believe, is a microcosm of a much larger problem that we have, is that our government has become not accountable to us, the people that have the authority. And it is time to start taking that authority away from them. I said that early on, we need to take their jobs away from them. Um, and here's what you can do. Call up your senator and your representative. Point blank, you just say, I want to know where you stand on this feral swine issue. If they're with the state on it, you need to vote against them. I don't care if you vote for the other party, if you're a Democrat, vote Republican, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, just vote against them. Um, if they are with us on it, you need to keep them in office because they're showing courage, all right? Courage. Courage and honor go together, right? They, they just do. Um, 
and the, the other two things go together as well. And uh, uh, let's just talk about uh, um, Mr. Shooty for a minute. Um, here's a guy that campaigns on his uh, his love of the Constitution, all right, and yet his minions level a seven hundred thousand dollar fine against me for raising pigs. Right? Um, that is a clear violation of the Eighth Amendment. Clear violation. And when you violate the Constitution, that's a bad thing in this country. Mm -hmm. There is another individual, and so, and so that guy really needs to go. Bill Schutte, um, around here we call him Brutal Bill. Yes, that's what I forgot it for a minute. Brutal Bill, because he's a brute. I mean, he has his minions giving a, a small family farmer $700,000. That's pretty darn brutal, in my opinion. Um, the governor? No. I mean, he's supposed to shepherd the people of this state. Uh, there's one other individual that's been left out, and it's, it's high time that that person is, um, is talked about here because it's, it's too bad that this has gone this far. But this is my county sheriff. And I want you all to know that early on in this, before there was any um, problems, we saw that there were storm clouds on the horizon. My wife and I made an appointment, got on his calendar, uh, went to his office, and tried to put the declaratory ruling in his hand so he could look at that. And uh, because the county sheriff has more authority in the county than any state official has, or any federal official has. And that's the reality of it. You might not think so, but the county sheriff has an awful lot of power. Um, the county sheriff could have looked at that declaratory ruling and he could have said, not in my county, because this violates the Constitution of the United States. The county sheriff took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. His job is to protect the blessings of liberty and freedom of us, the citizens of the United States. We are blanketed by the Constitution, and his job is to make sure that that blanket stays firmly in place. He may not like us, but his duty is to make sure that stays in place. And we give him that authority when we elect him to that office of county sheriff. It is an administrative position. Sure, they do have their law enforcement people, but they have a lot of other people that work for them as well. And he is uh, remiss in his duties, and we were bringing that to his attention that maybe you should look at this and uh, maybe contact the Attorney General and say, hey, you can't do this, and it's not going to happen in my county. Unfortunately, he did not, and that shows that he is one of those guys that wants to go with the flow and not make any waves, not make any waves. So he, it, it appears as though he occupies that position as county sheriff uh, for his own good or for his own entertainment or whatever, for, his, for whatever he thinks he's there for. And I plan to uh, bring that, that concept to the forefront in the next, uh, in the next 90 days. Uh, I believe that's when we will go to court again. I'm going to bring that up. He could have done something and he didn't. And what that amounts to, I alluded to this before, it amounts to dereliction of duty. When you know what your duty is and you do not do it, that is dereliction of duty. And to me, there is nothing more dishonorable than a man that takes a paycheck to protect uh, the weakest among us, takes that paycheck, but does not. There's nothing more dishonorable that I can imagine. Uh, and I, I think that that individual needs to be severely reprimanded and most likely removed from that position. This county deserves a sheriff that will um, protect the people and make sure that blanket of constitutional freedom stays firmly in place over them. Our world is changing and the state I mean, this, this thing that the state has done is absolutely crazy. You know, any, any pig with a straight tail or a curly tail is, is illegal. The county sheriff should have stepped in and said, I don't think so, boys. Try again. If he did that, then the attorney general's office would say, hey, we don't have, you know, the county sheriff's not with us. We can't do this in Nisaki County. 
uh, and they would have to go to a different county. So they would have had to pick on somebody else. But it was only because our guy looked the other way, our county sheriff looked the other way, that the, the DNR was willing to press on with this and the attorney general was willing to take the case. Uh, the state governor is going to look the other way. It appears that that's the way this is. So that needs to change. Um, what we need to do is we need to swap some of these people out with people that believe in the freedoms of the Constitution and will do their duty to protect the freedoms of the Constitution, period. End of story. So I, I'm going to ask you again to, you know, a lot of you people are from different counties uh, in, in Michigan and across the United States, but I would encourage you right now to call your uh, state uh, senator, your state representative, and say, where are you on this? Where are you? You know, and they can tell you anything over the phone. Their, their little minions will. But then check and see how they vote. And let them know that you're not going to put up with it. And you're going to put them out if they don't. This is very important because we're talking about a regulatory agency. I've said this many times before. The DNR is nothing more than a regulatory agency. And they've taken it upon themselves to create law and then they're going to use their enforcement wing to make us do it, right? That's not how this works in this country. This is a country of the people and by the people. And our legislators, Darwin Bohr, are the guys that make the laws. And then the DNR carries those laws out, right? In this case, they've decided that they're going to make their own laws and carry them out. Wonder why? Slippery slope when they start doing that. Slippery slope, very slippery. And uh, that's not the way it works. They should have been squashed a long time ago. But like I said before, um, regulatory agency, let's say like the state police. Again, I have no beef with the state, state police. They're pretty good people in, this, in our state. Pretty uh, uptight looking, you know, professional looking outfit. Um, but let's say the state police decided that any car 10 years or older, that they don't want them on the road. Uh, and then started issuing tickets, right? Clearly that's wrong. Clearly that's wrong. But we've got the same thing. We, at, well, in that case, at least the, um, the state police, their job is to deal with cars and the highway. In this case, we have the DNR. Their job, they're supposed to be out in the woods chasing deer and squirrels around. But in this case, they've decided, no, we're going to take jurisdiction over farms. Farms. Well, let's say the DNR decided that four-wheel drive vehicles are doing too much damage in the woods. Could they take over jurisdictions, say, of auto dealerships? Why not, right? I mean, if uh, a four-wheel drive gets out of control and does damage to the woods, rooting up fields and causing damage and, you know, uh, killing baby deer and all this stuff, shouldn't they be able to shut it down at the spigot, get it right at the spigot? right at the dealership. So then we have the DNR uh, that's controlling dealerships, auto dealerships. No, clearly wrong. And, uh, you know, we all need to make a united stand on this and tell them, not no, but hell no. And then we need to chase them back down their hole. The DNR just put on 25 new conservation officers in the, in the state of Michigan. If anybody hasn't noticed, the state of Michigan is not doing real well. Uh, what do we need those guys for? Can someone tell me? Uh, I don't think so. I'm going to call on our legislators one more time to look at this and start to defund these people. I mean, they're clearly uh, uh, out of control. It's like a, a, fi a forest fire with the DNR. They're clearly out of control, and they're going to want to, you know, increase their numbers and increase their authority. No. You know, our legis legislators, you need to get a handle on that. That's another thing that we need to bring to their attention when we speak with them that here's, here's a regulatory agency that we, we really don't even need, you know. If I was in charge of that outfit, those boys would be driving around in two-wheel drive pickup trucks with a 38 caliber revolver on their belt with six extra rounds instead of what they are packing and what they are driving. They look like, uh, you know, something that should be cruising around in Afghanistan. I'm really offended by that. So... That's what I have to say today. I know it's kind of hard hitting, but uh, I think a lot of you are with me on this. And do your duty, get out there and make your voices heard. Thanks.